Hello, I'm Robin Gibson, and this is the Harvard House Money Morsel. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us again. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell so you get a notification of when we release a new video. Well, the one thing that the market proves um, professional investors is as soon as you make a pronouncement one way, it's going to move the other way. Is that right, Vili? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Vili, this last week, I mean, we saw the RAND at one point. I think we were, we were thinking we were going to go under 18, and uh, we've kind of blown out to almost 18.50, I think, this morning. Um, and a lot of that has come out of jitters again in inflation, and the Fed had something to say. Mm. Um, during the course of the week. So tell us what's happened and uh, is everything we said last week off the table? Are things, you know, kind of getting uh, worse again or is this just a little bump in the road? Yeah, Rowan, very difficult. Let's see if we can find a different source to hear what's going on. So, um, <laughs> yeah. No, Robin, I don't think a, a, um, the underlying momentum has changed. But uh, as you say, the Fed's minutes, uh, we've spoken about this before, you know, people analyze it with red pens and see words of change and, and all of those things. So analyzing those, it, it appears that the Fed will be um, sticky when it comes to lowering rates. Um, and one of the reasons is actually the stickiness of inflation, which we've spoken about um, quite a few times in this forum. And um, I think, you know, sometimes when we wish for things, like we said last, last week or the week before, commodity prices have risen. Um, they, um, they've escalated in price and so on. And when you really analyze the economics again, over time it leads to inflation, you know, the price increase in those things. So yeah. suddenly the markets are standing still a bit and saying, okay, um, it would appear that uh, that inflation will be sticky. But, um, you know, underlying again, we had um, indicators such as the PMIs, which is a purchasing manager ind index all over the world. We, we get a f what they call a flash number Yes. Um, just before the month ends, you get an indication, a sort of a feel. Mm -hmm. And across Europe and in the US, those numbers also came out in the last day or two. And they're still well above the, above the 50 level, which, you know, 50 is sort of uh, equilibrium. And as soon as you get a 51, 52, it indicates that there's growth coming. So, so the th things that we've said historically um, is coming through. There is underlying momentum in, in the economies. Um, and we see, we see that. The labor market uh, in the U.S. is also a bit more sticky than everybody is expecting or were, were expecting previously. So it's all indicating that back to the point of we're back on the phase of interest rates staying higher for longer. I think that's, that's just the, yes. uh, the, the, the actual daily count on the markets. The yield curve in the U.S. has actually escalated yesterday. For them to have a move of five to seven points from the short end to the long end is actually a massive move, considering that their interest rates is like four and a half, four point seven percent thereabout, um, and it caused an upset in our market, and that escalated into the red, as you say. Yeah. We we were at eighteen oh four, I think, on the low, and then the last twenty four hours uh, we've moved almost fifty cents. So yes. yeah, it's just the short term gyrations in the market that's that's back on the cards, but I think the fundamentals are still intact. Yeah. And of course, by the time the viewers watch this, we'll be in the week where we're voting. We're voting, And yeah. then uh, I think the, the joke of going around uh, social media at the moment is, uh, what's it, only four days left till load shedding <laughs> resumes. <laughs> um, and uh, look, I, I mean, we're obviously not on the page uh, that they're burning diesel to keep no. the lights on and uh, Eskimo denying that hotly, whereas uh, I think not many people believe that. But obviously next week we will start to see whether... The load shedding is better, but if it is, that bodes well for us, doesn't it? Yeah, Robin, and I think um, one has to start reading other media as well mm -hmm. um, and uh, more facts on, on Eskom. And it's interesting, you know, we have, we had doom prep profits um, mm -hmm. up to about end of last year, beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to quote people's names because mm -hmm. that's not what, what we're here for. And we've seen one specific individual who's really changed his tune because mm -hmm. he's analy analyzing the facts and he came out with some interesting statistics in yes, what's been done from a from a, a servicing perspective, um, fixing stuff and so on. I was reading an article this morning of uh, the new uh, chief at uh, at uh, Eskom also saying we're doing some basic things right. We we got some help in. Yeah. We do performance management. We look at what we really fix and those type of things. So yeah, I'm 
I'm, I'm just thinking we, we have to divorce, divorce sorry, the concept of we're just burning diesel. Um, uh, too many statistics coming out saying, no, we don't. Yeah. Um, we're actually reaping the benefit of some all it fixes that's been in place and it's coming through now. So yeah, I don't think on the day after the election where we're sitting in the dark, <laughs> we might be sitting late at night to see what, this, what the outcome is. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Vili, interestingly enough, um, I think you've put many times in our investment meeting, you brought the graph that correlates GDP growth um, with electricity availability. Um, I mean, if we are going back into that space, it really bodes well for a Maybe a slight turnaround in GDP, which is what we're all looking for. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, Robin, and it comes back to the cost, the cost numbers. If we just think about the companies who've released uh, um, company results, you know, the last year or so, mm. on that cost line, it was, you know, what did we do to have our own power? What did mm. we do for for you know, diesel and um, and backup generators and all sorts of things? That cost line is disappearing. So imagine we were talking billions. Yeah. If that number is in the system now and they can buy new stock or they can, uh, you know, advance some other benefits to the profit line and so on, yeah. Um, and then just overall the economy, yeah, you awesome. know, just lifting maybe from a 0.4 to a 1.4, you, yeah. know, you know, that type of thing. That would so, be a yeah. big difference, yeah. yeah. Well, I would encourage you to get out and cast your vote um, if you haven't already. I'm not sure whether it will be after elections, before elections, when you're watching this, but it is yeah. going to be a watershed moment for South Africa Definitely. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.